One of the higher profile bills this session, Senator, making its way through the process right now, in fact, received its preliminary vote this week, and that is the Parents' Bill of Rights, Senate Bill 4. Yes. Basically, if I get a little bit of the context here, you know, we have some schools who have given material to kids and kind of separated kids by race or made comments that parents felt were inappropriate. I feel we're we're inappropriate. A lot of the people here feel are inappropriate. So we have tried to work on a bill and produce something that helps to put a stop to that and increases transparency for parents who want to be sure that that is not happening. I would say that I think a lot of the rural schools really are not involved in this so much, but a lot of the city schools are. As I've told people who have been concerned about this bill, You know, if you don't police your own, eventually people are going to get angry enough and they're going to come to us and we will have to come up with a solution. And so really, that's where we're at. So the bill includes curriculum requirements. You have to make them available to parents. School boards have to approve curriculum at least two months before they implement the curriculum. There will be accountability report cards for schools, basically letting people know how the school is doing. These requirements apply to all schools, including charter and virtual schools. The biggest part of the bill, I would say, includes the Parents' Bill of Rights. So we have had some school board that parents have appeared before with complaints or, you know, questions about what is happening in the classroom. Some of the boards have been responsive. Others have basically just shut the parents out. The Parents' Bill of Rights allows or requires that there be a portal where all curriculum, all of the books, all of the training for teachers be posted for all of our schools. And this way, parents can go there, review those things, make sure that they're acceptable to them. If schools don't do it, it does include a fine that they will have to pay. So, for instance, if you have a child in a school and they come home and tell you that this is an incident that did happen, elementary children were told the white children should all go to one side of the room and everyone else go to the other side of the room. Um, Of course, people didn't like that. And so if there is a complaint such as that, ultimately that complaint can go all the way to the State Board of Education. And if it is found that, you know, the school did do that, and it's not just a very isolated incident, then the school can be fined and the child can be sent to another school. And that school, the offending school, has to pay the tuition. So it really does have some teeth to it, so to speak. It also talks, the bill also talks about school-issued electronic devices. There's concern about, you know, kids getting into things they shouldn't. It does talk about anything the school provides has to have technology solutions that prohibit their access to social media, video sharing, and anything that could be considered pornography. But there's also a little bit of additional money in the bill for those that have a high percentage of poverty in their schools a little bit of more of a factor in the weighted average daily attendance going from 25% to 30%. This will be a lot of the rural schools and probably the inner city schools who do have high poverty, give them a little bit of additional funding. There's some state aid for transportation. Basically, I think the bill is a good bill. We have looked at some of the other bills across the country, and we think that we have addressed the concerns of the parents. Nothing is 100% foolproof but it's certainly a giant first step to holding people accountable. That's the the biggest part of it, again, is the parents' children, and it's in part their tax dollars. I mean, in some cases, I think people say, oh, well, that's not happening here. Well, my goodness, you know, look at the news and look across the country. It's everywhere. You really have to take steps to make sure that it's not coming to your school district. And if it is in your school district, take steps to get it out. And this helps them to do that. Yes.